Hey guys, Infidel1258 here. Today I'm going to share with you an extended clip from Splinterlands TV where myself and Jim Morgan get into a variety of topics. The foremost of which is actually the new changes that are coming to the reward system within Splinterlands. That's one of the biggest topics we, do, we address today. But we also talk about bots, bronze league. We talk about decentralization of Splinterlands and the code being open source and what that might mean for future development. There's a ton of things here, including some goal or diamond rank grind. It's a great video. I edited it down. Guys, I hope you enjoy the video. Thank you so much for your time and attention. Have an amazing day. God bless. Jim? Hey. How you doing? Doing well yourself? Good, man. So, uh, lots of things to talk about tonight. Got some season rewards. Got a There were several things from the town hall. Quickly, uh, to recap, my aims are tonight talking about this, um, do some rank grind, get into champion, talk about the town hall, specifically quick comments and validators done a lot of talking about that lady. Yes, I'm hyped about it, but not too much time. The economy changes that were really clearly described in the town hall. Um, my conclusions from that, because it's it's one thing for, for them to talk about what is going to happen, then it's another thing for me to kind of interpret whether, how I imagine that's gonna unfold. Yeah, okay. Um, well, let's kick it off, first of all, by in seeing what I got here for my my reward. And then I want to... Um, yeah, from the Cryptomancer dropping, in, in my opinion, a comment relating to the most important part of what we got out of the Town Hall. Starter slash Ghost Cards. Reducing rewards will be a first for the game impacts to rentals and market prices could be big and this is like relating to the whole like the totally new revamping of rewards it's there's so much going on there's going to be like a different type of reward you get these reward let's get into that in a minute there's a lot to say and this and the the part he's he's focusing on is i agree it's it's gigantic and it's it's definitely probably a 20 minute conversation i'm going to think jim um but let's open this first and see what we get. And like I said, guys, I'm, I'm going to be throwing out battles throughout the night here, just while we go through the conversations. But anything you guys want, you know, if you want to drop a co comment or a question about whatever, uh, I'm happy to get into it. I just think n I really want to tackle this topic first, and a couple other things that I won't want to interrupt. Uh, they don't have to be in any sort of order, except once we start, I want to I want to finish that one idea. Not the best, hey, but. One of my points that I always make always rings, just comes to my mind whenever I see these rares, especially the rares, I think to myself, it's like 10 cents or something stupid. And these are two cents or something like that. And in four years, they won't be. So as long as I hold them between now and four years, it's as if this is a dollar card, I think. And it's as if this is a $5 card or something like that, because I'm going to hold it until they're that expensive. And then yeah. I'll sell them. And so it's this retroactive raise. That's what I always talk about when I'm, that's what I mean when I say that phrase, retroactive raise. I've worked at places in the past where, because I was union, two years go by, there's no contract. You're working for the same rate, same rate, same rate. And then in 2023, you get a raise. Well, they'll pay you. That raise will apply to 2022 and 2021 because you, you ought to have had that raise back then. That's what's going to happen here. Okay. So, first question though, Jim, did you see the did you watch the town hall this week? Uh, it was on yeah, it was on Monday. It kind of like surprised me. Yeah, it's I a, forgot that they were going to Monday. It, yeah, me too. I've got it here and we can we can open it up and and just use this as a, a cue, but I took notes while I watched it separately and so I might pop between those or I'll bring those up um on my page also. Um, so talking about rewards, ranked rewards. Uh, what Cryptomancer was was talking about was was the the ch the change to the the accounts will no longer be able to just spam starter cards or what some people call ghost cards. And for anyone that's brand new to the game, ghost cards are those ones that you actually don't own, but the game is letting you use because it wants to give you some some options to play with. And you can tell usually when you come into 
into here, into your list of cards, your inventory. This card I own, and you can tell by the darkness of the red. You can also tell that there's there's a little S here, but there's no S here. There's no S here. I own these cards. S means starter, and it pops right up there. Starter card is a starter card, which may be used in battles, even if you do not own it. Um, it's really, this was like, I, I think this initially was created with good intentions around opening doors for more people to get in this game, try it out, get, you know, their feet wet in blockchain because we want to remove barriers, not, you know, uh, put too many barriers in front of people coming in, enjoying our game. But of course, as we have long known, there's people who have hundreds or even thousands of accounts. I actually don't know anyone that's like that, but I've read about I've read about what's that one there's like a fire account and you fire something very famous he blogs about having been fire like king? a what's that fire king yes yeah he wrote blogs about his like massive bot farm and so clearly there was a there was a certain audience of people that were exploiting the lower level of this game in particular to farm the five you know, essentially four or five free cards that were they were getting every season plus one a day um, until they recently changed the rewards. And and that was one thing, but it, I, that had the double effect of, of impacting new players, as we've talked about, Jim. Um, the 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 this new idea that they will. They've said over the last weeks and months that they'll change it so that we can't play them as much. Maybe they'll be limited. They weren't really clear, but this week uh matt came out and said where was it let's see economy starter cards um he said he said something that i never really thought about he said the starter cards being free is essentially infinite inflation i never thought about it that way but that's true that was a phrase that matt said this week and what that means is that is that if you can go in and create another account for 10 bucks then you're essentially creating a whole like you're getting one bcx of every card with that ten dollar purchase and you can do that theoretically a thousand times a million times who get like as much as you as many accounts as you want to buy you can do that for and that is a detriment to the the appreciation of our assets not to mention those accounts can then farm for assets and extract value without in matt's words without um how did he put it? Putting value back into the ecosystem. And so with the, all of that in mind, I think it's really brilliant that they want to introduce two things. One, they're going to prevent you from, in a sense, they're going to prevent you from playing with those free cards as much as you previously would have been able to through this new thing called reward share, reward shares. And so when you play the game, instead of coming in and what we just did a moment ago and look at a you know, you play a daily quest and then you earn uh, your daily quest and it has an X amount of loot chest in it. They're going to give you a certain amount of reward shares for every single win, like you get with your DC. Um, you get so many at diamond, you get more, more at champion, you get less at gold. You're going to get this, the same is going to be, it's going to be similar with reward shares. And at, at certain thresholds, you'll receive a loot chest or loot chests. It sounds like they're going to be more... Um, they're going to be more frequent i think like i got the i get the impression we're going to get more loot chests to open and they're going to be more profitable particularly at a higher level and so th there's a lot going on there jim thoughts on what so far w w at least what i've said there yeah i mean i think it's an amazing idea <laughs> the um for for all the people to be buying the new cards and I believe that they also stated that the new accounts are going to be given some credits as well to throw into, uh, so that way they can throw money into the marketplace. Cool. I didn't, I didn't see that. That's, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm fairly certain. Um, and then, uh, yeah, the, the whole thing with the infinite scaling, I didn't even think about that either. Yeah. It's a, it's a really good way to think about it. Yeah. And it, and it's so, and it's so true. Like how many people were are botting on basic accounts, mm -hmm. right? It's like, oh yeah, I can just make my money in you know X time frame. I have like a thousand bots or however many it is that they're running. Mm -hmm. Yeah, clearly something had to change. 
and it's but at the same time i wasn't sure what and i've said this for a long time because people have all, all often asked me like what you know don't you agree that often it sounds something like this like bots are a huge problem they're ruining the game don't you agree that's usually the tone of the co the comment that i end up reading and i usually say no i don't agree and it's not because i don't think bots are a problem it's because i don't see a path to resolving the bot issue in a way that would enable that that makes any sense like until now I, I haven't really I haven't personally been able to think through how this would um, how we would alter this in some meaningful way so that so that so that we could simultaneously kind of silence or at least detract the the mass kind of farming from bots without contributing anything yes i don't Ooh. want that like how do we stop that but then um without without simultaneously and totally just going nuclear on either the bronze level accounts or for that matter the 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 benefits of decentralized decentralization offers like blockchain has a, f a feature decentralization decentralization is a, is an amazing thing it part of that is it can allow that we don't need to go through all the normal kyc garbage which most people who are in this space or exploring blockchain understand is like a really it's a value proposition it's great that we don't have to you know necessarily be signing on as you know Dwayne cunningham date of birth in postal code blank 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 um and i think i in my opinion that's a huge that's a huge part of why i came to blockchain and it seems to me that Aggie and Yaba have never wanted to push too hard on this issue because really, I don't know how you would push really hard to particularly isolate bots unless there was this sort of ex a really intentional um, uh, attack against, you know, traditional, like, like I say, KYC, like a real focused effort to just know every customer involved in this game. Um, and then that, that would be, in my opinion, the antithesis of what attracted me here in the first place, which I'm so glad to see that they defend. And yet I, there's a problem and I was never know, I never knew how to, how, how to get through that. So I'm pumped about it. And I do think it's a meaningful solution. I do think, um, that the reward share idea is awesome for maybe several reasons. Um, and let's focus for a few minutes specifically on that. The, this idea that you would get paid reward shares that are going to be more like Matt said they would be like the way we get DEC. And so a little bit per game, a little bit per game, and it's going to start accumulating. And over the course of a day or over several hours or whatever, you're going to accumulate enough to claim several rewards. And he then said, and I wrote down a, wrote down a quote. He said, First of all, this was this was exciting. He said this will be released in May, so this is like right around the corner. Um, I don't know if it's late May, but still, it's a April twenty second, so this is real soon. And then he said, he said, uh, let's say we increase the reward. Oh, this was cool. Let's say we increase the rewards too much. Like, what would that look like? And he says, well, there is no too much. After we introduce reward shares, we are targeting. Um, now, some of this is a paraphrase, so bear with me. After we introduce this reward share idea, because you have to buy cards to earn reward shares, we will we will be targeting pretty huge increases in the reward player. Hang on, that's a separate idea, isn't it? Um, so, in so let me finish that first thought. You'll in order to earn reward shares, like we said, the ghost cards, uh, the starter cards. They actually, I didn't, I don't know if I said this yet. They will actually take away, they will use up, they will reduce some of the reward shares you've earned for the day. So it's like, it's like, yes, you can use that reward, that free card if you want, it's there for you. Um, but it's actually going to take away from some of these, the earning potential that you, you have access to. And so you're obviously going to want to avoid that, which is interesting because it's going to create buying pressure on some of the cards that we're all taking for granted. Some of the new modern, um, um, chaos legion cards that are 
relatively cheap right now are going to need to be bought up a little bit at least one bcx for most accounts because no one's going to want to lose these reward shares and, and um and uh this this blew my mind because just yesterday jim i think we were talking about how we were we were talking about how i don't know how we fix um how we attract new players because part part my my suggestion in that conversation was yeah there's one way you just blow up the reward pool just create like 10x on how much dc you're giving how many cards you're giving um lots of new players are going to come but that's going to have a problem an a impact on scarcity and that's going to have an imp a negative impact on the economy but this idea allows that not to be true like like this is crazy because it's even if they bl and they are growing they're going to hugely increase the types of rewards we're receiving by playing this game but they're going to because of this reward share thing they can they can know that those rewards are going to end up in the hands of people human beings or for that matter people who run bots that have actually invested in the ecosystem and that's why he says there's no too much rewards it's actually the through this reward share mechanism we can we can trust that this economy is going to be actually paying people who have invested who have who have contributed who have brought value to the system which is awesome any thoughts on that jim um uh, well, I guess like we talked a lot about <laughs> what to bring, you know, more players in, mm -hmm. and uh, and now can I like even remember some stuff? PVE. <laughs> yeah, just all the updates we talked about the PVE yeah. and this kind of building out the lore. You had a, I like that one idea you had. You said like two v two even where you could do yeah. Relay. yeah it, there's lots of really cool ideas, and to actually now that you mentioned that. One of the things that Yaba mentioned was that he always wants to keep this code open source. And that's really cool, guys. Think about this. He talked about this in the town hall. You might have missed it. I caught it just before I logged on. That's why. And it, I'm taking I'm diligently taking notes while I'm there because I really want to bring that information here. And he said, he said he always he goes to different development studios and partners and he's like, look, this is our deal. This is what we're aiming at. It's open source. And they're always they're always like, what do you mean it's open source? You can't do that. You're going to like you're giving away the uh, the farm. But he always says, look, what happens is that's how innovation happens, like different enter different people with thoughtful uh, and talent, thoughtfulness and talent can come in and, and create some sort of um, uh, some clone of the game. I forget, That's not the word. Uh, a, a hard fork of the game and and essentially make it their own but then if that starts to take off because the crowd loves it guess what happens splinterland says oh look that feature is really neat let's do that and so pick them up. <laughs> yeah exactly so it's like this free it's like this it's as if there's I, I gotta submit my team but it's almost like there's um re r d research and development like you're just saying to the world anybody want to develop for us go ahead and try it like if we like what you do we'll we'll we'll, we'll give you money later wizards of the coast actually did the exact same thing there were a group of people that made a brand new format for magic the gathering mm. called elder dragon highlander okay and they eventually came out with pretty much the exact rules essentially but changed it up uh, a little bit um and now the format is called commander officially by wizards of the coast i they actually i think they mentioned this commander is that i, I think i recall uh yeah but actually calling that one out is that that who what is that a um D, &D thing or what who was that uh, so wizards of the coast who owns magic the gathering they okay. also own magic uh, D &D as well. yes yeah but yeah it's specifically for magic the gathering yeah yeah they did he did he did actually uh reference that exact instance oh. yeah uh lord is saying did wizards of the coast reward the inventors i'm not entirely sure but um i do know that the people that run the ban list for the commander format they it's like their own separate you know like society or council whatever you want to call it they're not officially a part of wizards of the coast but they get to decide what is banned inside the 
inside the commander format. Very cool. I think that's, <clears throat> it's super neat that that is a, um, what's the word like option just that, that there's, that there's literally an access point for, for third party developers to walk in and, and explore developing in a way that might give them an opportunity for personal recognition like they can build on the shoulders they can build on the foundation of this this game already and the success of it already um so i think that's really neat man and i do think that's going to invite uh forks and i do think that's that's going to invite innovation and actually really interestingly you guys maybe you guys aren't new you, aren't, you haven't been around blockchain long enough to understand the power of forks and what that can do for you financially but what he's that opportunity that he's leaving that door open for Splinterlands to be forked is actually really amazing from a financial standpoint. Because you think about the fact that you have, Jim, how much assets do you think you have on in card card assets? Rough, rough dollar value. Oh, oh, dollar value wise. Yeah. So like peak monsters. Yeah. Uh, not a whole lot right now. <laughs> okay. Well, I've got sixty thousand on my main account. And if there was a if there was a hard fork, the that value would be duplicated. Well, so, you might not but... say maybe that's not fair because it those those assets would be duplicated whether or not the other blockchain had merit and whether or not people played it would would decide whether or not those second assets had value or not. But if somebody's going to do that for free and just give me a bunch of free assets on a blockchain maybe with some cool innovation that i may or may not like of course i'm gonna you have to you have to be careful about these things because there can be there can be the strange scams that happen out of this stuff but um if this ever happens i'll cover it and we'll walk through it together safely but if it's if it happens safely it's an opportunity to get free assets like it happened with hive when steve when steam uh when hive hard forked off steam mm -hmm. yeah you know, uh, when, when they were talking about that idea of, like, allowing people to make whatever other stuff, mm -hmm. I was like, man, Dwayne, I, I think it's time we make a, we make that that blockchain game and it's just something to do with, with Splinterlands. Yeah. Yeah. Make I, some form of, I don't, I don't even know, make some form of what? <laughs> no clue. I, I know, that's the thing. Like, I, I don't often, I don't know how I would, it's, I kind of feel like Matt sometimes in the sense of uh like what he said today or er, sorry in the town hall that i was watching today he said um how did he frame it he was like when we started this he had this metaphor he's like when we started splinter lands we had this vision for what it would be but we didn't really understand how to do that we just had this vision and we began we made some packs and it took about five months we made some packs there was no game we sold the packs and people who wanted to support us and who trusted us bought the packs. Um, it's almost like a Kickstarter, but they didn't, they didn't, he said, he said this metaphor. He was like, it was like, it was like we entered a, like we were going on a journey. We entered a tunnel and we didn't know at oh, first, at yeah. first I saw the tunnel. Then we, then we, we got to the tunnel and we went in it. Then I didn't know how long the tunnel would last. And, or even if we'd ever find our way out. And now I feel like I can see the end of the tunnel. And it's this whole process of like, he didn't, he wasn't an expert in this stuff when he started. And you know what, Jim, oh, neither yes. are we, but we have this, we actually, just like we've been talking about the validator nodes, just like we've been talking about, um, uh, you know, game stuff or you just every, all of it, all of it. Like, it's like, where is this thing going to lead? I, I don't know, but it's really, really cool to, to, to believe. And I keep I do believe that if we kind of continue to be focused on growing in this space and learning and learning and learning, we will be able to surprise ourselves in, in some years. And everybody here listening, I, I feel the exact same way for you guys. If we take it seriously now. Um, I want to see if we, I think we tackled rewards adequately, but let's see. We talked about, the reward shares we talked about how starter cards ghost cards are going to be kind of nerfed in a sense through them eating your reward shares um 
We talked about how that would positively affect the economy and causing all accounts that want to earn rewards to have to buy at least one BCX. Once ranked rewards are live, every battle will begin. Yeah, gold foot. Oh yeah, we didn't. The bone there. It's um. The this is kind of an important point to maybe expand on. Once ranked battles are live in this new format, every battle will give reward shares. We said that depending on your rating. So it's going to depend where you're at. But it's also going to, it's like this bonus thing. Just like we have bonuses for guilds and win streak and gold foils or alphas or betas, um, they will increase your reward shares also. Um, and that will feed into, like we said, the daily and season chests. So it's a huge transformation. It's going to, it sounds like it's going to mean more, actually more frequent rewards, but also at the highest levels, more meaningful rewards. And that's actually one thing I didn't talk about. I wanted to, but didn't get there yet. I, I, the quote I wrote down that I was trying to read earlier, but um, got distracted by something else. This is Matt. He said, we really want to, we, okay. We are, we are targeting pretty huge increases in the rewards players will earn. And it's really heavily weighted on higher tiers. That's what he said. That's a quote. So that's great news for me a diamond uh, champion kind of thing. Uh, but he went on to say, we really want to encourage, and this is interesting. Think about this. We really want to encourage people to stop multiplying lower accounts and aim at one or two champion accounts. And what would that do for everybody at silver and bronze and, and gold? I actually, as I, as I understand the reward pool, and I might be wrong about this, Jim, help me if I, if you think I'm wrong here, but doesn't, doesn't silver have its own pool and gold have its own pool? Um, no, it it okay. scale based upon rating. Okay. So it's um so whenever you double your rating, um your rewards actually get tripled in price or cubed. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> it it used to be a scaling of whenever you would double, it would get uh squared. So I see. But yeah, this so is now it's cubed as you're climbing up higher and higher. So this is interesting though, because from even from like, so this is great news for somebody like me who's at a higher level, but it's actually, it's, to me, I can think of one way how it might be really beneficial to lower level accounts too, which is this lower level accounts, um, are, and we really want to encourage people to stop multiplying. Okay. So there's tons of people that have champion level accounts. They have enough assets to fight in champion, but they're coming down to gold and bronze, silver, maybe because they want to win the league. They want to win the, the leaderboard rather. Um, maybe because multiple accounts is giving them more rewards. Either way, those are certain, those are incentives that are, they're pulling them out of the place that, that unique spot at the top of the leaderboard, like within champion or, or even high level diamond. And so, if 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 accounts are being put i think if 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 accounts are being rewarded i don't want i don't want to say appropriately because it makes me sound like i'm i'm kind of bitching and moaning about how little i get and i'm not but i don't know how else to say it like if if diamond and champion teams are getting accounts are getting paid so much that they they really see value in unifying all their collection and putting it in one account or two accounts and fighting at that highest level that's going to mean, I think that's going to mean fewer accounts at first fighting within the pool because it's going to be certain, like for me, for instance, I have like 2.5 million power on my main account. And then I have another maybe 2 million power across eight other accounts. Depending on what this ends up looking like, this might really mean that I have to take away that I have to close down those eight, those eight accounts and put it into two accounts that i'm trying to reach champion with and that takes away competition at silver at gold yeah silver gold maybe a little bit of diamond and so then i think that does mean there's more rewards to, to go around because there's eight there, for me alone there's eight less accounts that are going to be fighting in there taking bits of that pie um yeah. maybe i'm maybe i'm not thinking all of that through but i think that's so what do you think jim I, I really don't know. Okay. No, it's fine. Yeah. I mean, I'm just, I'm taking a stab at it. Like I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to think it through. I don't think, and I honestly, to be fair though, I actually don't think, I don't think Yawa understands fully yet. And he kind of said that in almost as many words in the town hall, he said like, 
he kind of said, look, this is not the final iteration. We have a vision for what this is going to be like. We're doing a lot of planning. It's going to be out in May. Um, he made it sound like he said it's going to be out in May come hell or high water, which to me means he feels rushed to make that happen, but he's going to make it happen, which is to say that there, there almost certainly will be hiccups or, you know, unforeseen complications. And he, and then he would say, he also said, pardon. I was going to say, especially since he got like his, like, uh, motivation, I guess you could say, or like that hint of adrenaline of being like, oh my God, he's really excited to be making this stuff happen now. Like he said, he saw the light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, but I, but there's, there's this acknowledgement from him even that, yeah there perhaps could be some unforeseen consequences. He didn't say that in exactly, but I, I got the impression he's recognizing that this is happening quick and it's okay. It's not, he, he, I think if somebody asked like, might this break? I think it was one of the frequently asked questions. They said like, I don't know if I wrote it down, but somebody did ask like, is it possible that these new rewards could break the economy? And Matt said, don't worry about that. Like it's going to be, we can iterate. We, it's not going to be the final iteration. We can, so all that to say, it's okay if you don't can't foresee all the possible complications or nuances of how this will feed into the rewards. Neither can I. We just try and throw some stuff at the wall and kind of, you know, see what sticks, I think. And I that's that's at least how my brain works. What is let's see what chat has to say about any of this. People talking with each other. I mean, assuming that forking equals positive project that increases value within the Splinterlands economy. I mean, assuming. Um, I don't know if I, if I'm assuming that it that the forking would equal positive project, uh, positive positive projects that will increase value within the Splinterlands economy. I would say that I am, I am willing to hmm, how would i say that it's it's more like that's a possibility when the when you close as far as i'm concerned closing doors on iteration makes you stagnant and so like you just look at your you, you guys work at you miss some of you work at c companies that have uh, and not they, they have an what's it called it's not called it's like an an internet within the within the company and it's like a walled garden it's it's curated certain websites are there on your home page um it won't let you go to this one or that one it's a curated like a firewall yeah but it's not just a firewall it's more like um like it, literally there'll be certain you'll go to like a home page that's that that they pardon me like uh, they set it up to where permissions to go to specific yeah. websites. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like a walled garden. Like there's, this is the area you can play in. We don't want you on, for instance, maybe YouTube. We don't want you on Facebook. We don't want you on Reddit. These, there's no reason for work related visits to those sites. We will specifically through the firewall, we you know we can, we can, we can like close that off. And as far as I'm concerned, that sort of walled garden is never a place where like massive innovation is ever going to take place. And this is, this is an analogy that, um, um, Anton, uh, Antonopoulos, like a, a famous Bitcoin maximalist used to talk about. He's like, innovation mm -hmm. happens in decentralization. Innovation happens where, um, anybody can try their hand at this thing and maybe 20 of them will, and 19 will be tremendous failures and that's okay. Um, so long as we aren't being, I guess, victimized by stepping into that, like sometimes you have to surrender keys. It can be dangerous. Like I said, we'll go through that if that if these opportunities arise. But um, I definitely am not saying that it necessarily is a positive thing. It's more like I want to see, just like Yaba and Aggie want to see, open opportunities for um innovation and iteration due to open source source code that is the possibility for goodness to come out of that is why i say it's like free r d you're telling you don't have to tell the people that are going to grab the code and run with it to go do that you don't have to pay them to do that you don't have to give them ideas you just have to say here's the code 
and maybe they use it and maybe they don't and maybe it produces some sort of cool new effect and maybe it doesn't you don't know until they try and there's no harm in letting them try except for you might argue you might try and argue that somebody comes along and undercuts uh, what Splinterlands is doing and takes away some of the some of the if they if they create a better project and do some sort of iteration upon it that that essentially makes Yaba and Aggie obsolete that is like one thing that you could argue is possible through iteration on the blockchain but I would I would say that is first of all doesn't necessarily affect you or me as players in the game if some John Doe came along and made the game better are you really going to care if your assets were duplicated over there are you really going to care um, but second of all, I don't believe for a second that Aggie or Yaba or the team would allow themselves to become obsolete in that way. Because like I said, as iteration happens over there, this game can then copy certain code and certain UI and certain game modes and whatever. So I don't, I don't agree that I am saying that it's necessarily optimistic or... Uh, positive i i'm what i'm clearly saying or trying to clearly say is that iteration is always a good thing it allows innovation mm -hmm. mm. what they say uh, competition breeds greatness right yeah man whiskey business went on to say could potentially bring a bad taste to crypto gaming space i don't agree like in the least um and i would say to you that that your your sentence you just try to apply that to a broader arena and look at, for instance, blockchain. Would you say that Litecoin has left a bad taste in people's mouth over Bitcoin? Would you say that, you know, Dash, which is another version of, of Bitcoin, uh, I think it uses the, used the Bitcoin code. And there's probably, there's probably 10 other copies. Uh, get, there's several, several coins used Bitcoin code. Bitcoin Cash is another one. There's a lot of Bitcoin. Some of them are really poorly thought of. Um, I don't want to name any projects because it might be somebody's favorite project, but there are there are five or six main Bitcoins and there's probably 10 or 20 or 100 other quote unquote Bitcoin whatever because you can make a coin and call it Bitcoin. But here's the thing. Does that stop anyone? Has that has that stopped anyone in the room here from saying, oh, I'm interested in Bitcoin? No. I mean, if it has, I don't really think we've thought that through because coin B, which is Bitcoin blank is, is just, it's based on the same code, but it's not in any way. It's not, it's not, it's not made by the same people. It's not um, offered to the same token holders. It's not, it's not worth the same thing. It has, it probably has unique code in it that makes it operate differently. It's, it's a totally different thing. And so I don't at all agree that doing some sort of <clears throat> innovation and iteration on splinterlands is going to distract or deter from the use case and excitement around an amazing blockchain based video game the only thing i can see is if some people are utilizing it to maybe scam some people and that will happen yeah yeah and, and that could be kind of what he was talking about as well and that's um, because fair. he also said and the nft space again because how recently have there been so many scams but then again there have been new laws in the in the u.s talking about how the i believe the irs would go um as long as you're able to like prove stuff it could be considered as wire fraud mm. so then they could be facing uh years in prison mm -hmm. like 20 to 40 years or something like that yeah there is this space is still so new crypto gaming, but even blockchain, even Bitcoin. Bitcoin is gigantic now. And there's a, I think there's still, how much is in it? Uh, there's a market cap of 750 billion in Bitcoin as of today, which is gigantic. It's way, I remember, like I remember when the whole space was 200 billion, the whole space, all coins and Bitcoin, even less. I think it was like a hundred at one point when I was still here. So anyways, it's so much bigger than it used to be, but it's still so small when I think gold is something like 10 trillion for just physical gold. And, and then you compare that to like, you know, the Dow Jones or like the major indices of the stock market. It's, this is itty bitty. Um, and so 
this is the wild west and there will be scams and that's why we have to come together as a community hopefully seeking one another's advice and 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 you know thoughtfulness around us so i i don't resent the comment uh, from whiskey business at all because it's it's thinking this stuff through but i i feel strongly in opposition to your main thrust there whiskey not saying that you're wrong that there won't be some problems that it that, that it won't um maybe give a some bumps and bruises to either Splinterlands or to the gaming crypto gaming revolution. It probably will, because certain people will come along and be like, well, here's the thing. I, I today I saw a YouTube video is a 45 minute YouTube video. It's an ad. I don't want to name the, the company because it's just a scam company, but I'll tell you that they, you, they were, they named themselves very close to Tesla, Tesla, obviously the legitimate company that's that we all know, um, that's changing in so many ways, changing the world. They're um, a scam. Why can't you put their name on blast? Well, I guess you're right. I guess I probably could. It's it's called Tesla. S T E S L E R. And I don't know if you could Google it. I don't want to Google it. Um, but I, I saw I've been seeing YouTube video after YouTube video. These are ads that are popping up when I'm watching my my blockchain based YouTube videos. And so I'm I'm like literally going between watching Splinterlands videos and like other blockchain stuff. And then they're like, hey, you might be dumb enough to fall for this. And the company's name is Tesla. Like, think about that. They've named themselves like closely to some name that we're all going to recognize to try and I think trick some people to be like, oh, that's that one I know I've heard about. That's the first red flag. And then it's like a 45 minute video where he op the first words out of his mouth are. By tomorrow, you're going to have forty seven hundred dollars or fifty seven hundred dollars in your account and absolutely free and no risk whatsoever. And this is this is what people do to people like we mo there like we are terrible to one another like we scam and we lie and we deceive and we cheat and we steal and for sure i don't know what that project is but i'll tell you I, I can't um, i cannot imagine any possible legitimate method for for me be able to be able to be able to promise you that you can have fifty seven hundred dollars tomorrow free and without any risk and so red flags, red flags, red flags. My point is that those sorts of people are going to come to blockchain and have already come and have created projects already. We've talked about some of them here, here on the channel and will come tomorrow and we'll create new games and we'll create new rug pulls and we'll create new pyramid schemes and we'll create new Ponzi's and so on and so forth. Um, th but we have to be discerning about that. And you can't say, you can't thoughtfully say to me, because there are some bad eggs out there, even if there are lots of bad eggs, that you would throw away your opportunity within within this ecosystem. And and maybe, you, you know what, if, if that's actually how you felt, if somebody felt that way, I would actually, I wouldn't try and win them over. I wouldn't try and convince them. I'd just say, okay, like, I don't share your concern. You know, good luck is how I would approach it. Uh, but Gonzo said that he actually just bought 12 Tesla <laughs> and he thought they were on the up and up. So <laughs> that's, yeah, that's it. Uh, I was, I was half expecting somebody in the chat to be like, Tesla's making me rich. <laughs> it's so much money. Yeah. Wow. That's intense. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to pass on that one. Yeah. I think I'm going to wait. Yeah. yeah um what's the play here we got look at we got sneak attack melee only i've got one demoralize in there i've got the i brought kitty with green because i love to do the quadruple strike with the grunt a carnage titan i think and then vigilator is like a, a quadruple strike in and of itself so then i, I think i want to go manticore for thorns and defender for thorns but i don't have enough for both of them so i'm gonna go Defender, because he's got the four melee as opposed to three. But he does have reach. Oh, well, no. Yeah, because you got the Carnage Titan, yeah. That's right. Oh, and, and, and it, it doesn't matter because they can all attack, yeah. Plus, if they have opportunity. So Disintegrator should, has Retaliate. Should I put him in the rear or should I go Cocatrice, which has the with the kitty might be like a, a repeated uh, evasion. Yeah, I think if we're talking about uh, defensive-wise, the cockatrice is better. 
uh, then that just sets you up to where you go further in the games, further in the turns to get more damage output. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to switch out the Manticore, uh, the Enchanted for the Manticore, because it's actually with my vision here is that this is going to be so evasive unless he has snare. This is going to be so evasive unless he has kitty or snare. This is he's never going to hit me. And as a result, I feel like I need more hit points up here to keep the vigilator alive. Let's see if this works. Ah, kitty. So he no one he won't be able to miss me, even though I have eight speed flight and dodge. Yeah. I think we still win though. Just on the face of it, what do you what do you think, Jim? We got this one or no? Oh man. Um chat, are we, we gonna win this one, chat? So it's like you both have a lot of damage output. They got the vid oh well, I guess you both have the vigilator. Yeah, I think you got this one. I think so. I think okay, so he's got a, all everything souped up. Lever Lever Moon says no. Uchi says yep. We're getting I'm getting more no's and yeses. I think I think we're gonna win it. And here here's why I think I'm gonna win it because I've got the quad, quad attack here on his main his first position where he's only got three. I'm gonna hit I'm gonna hit. I oh, know he has four because of the magic. Yeah. But it's not swinging for four each hit. He is swinging five damage on you versus your eight. Yeah, his vid, his vigil. We both have the vigilator, vigilator, vigilator. Somebody said he has vigilator. Okay, let's find out. Let's just watch you just it. Have all your stuff. You just have more HP. Yeah, that's true too. That's a, that's part of it. Yeah, he, he did bring the shatter, which. I guess could really hurt my Carnage Titan if it if he ends up it's gonna he gets there, yeah. yeah if he gets there. that's right if he gets there oh and you killed his vigilator yeah yeah that's that's, that's a wrap I think the vigilator went down that's a wrap boom boom and the demoralize is huge right now yeah the demoralize see I've said it like three or four times on my channel this is what I'm now calling a support tank where and there are three or four of these. Where yes, it's a tank. Obviously, that's what it the whole thing is. But it's it's one of its most powerful use cases is actually as a support in the rear position because it has that demoralize, just like Demented Shark has the inspire, and in certain rule sets where melee can come from any position, it's so huge to bring that extra inspire or for that matter, an extra demoralize, because you know in that context where it's melee only, he's he must play melee, and therefore demoralize can actually be really impactful. And so I find it I like I like that phrase because it's I don't love the the disintegrator from a main tank perspective, but I do really like it from that more support uh, perspective. Tales from the Cryptomancer says, speaking of Kitty, I would love to see scraping uh, of the blockchain of the battle chain for the diamond and champion level leaderboards to see the top three most common summoners used at those leagues with the highest players. That's a great, that's a great, you know, inquiry. Um, yeah, I mean, I would love to know more about that. I, I, I can, I think I can tell you summoner lab is working on some cool new stuff where we're going to see win rates which is this is like this is one of him more his more recent uh updates and he's going to add more features around that too i was really surprised around some of this stuff you can look at look at this you can look at the various leagues like this is the win rates at the novice level but then you can click on bronze and see 100 percent bronze 100 percent and he was talking to me about this stuff and he was telling me how many battles that have have gone into these calculations. Now this data, this data looks like, I can't believe it's actually a hundred. There must be either it reset recently and that's a smaller pool. Like for it to be a hundred, like 99 makes, would make more sense to me than a hundred. It's too perfect. There must be, so it's, it is in development now. This is like a test site. Um, but he's given it to me to like poke around and kind of get more familiar with. I'm 
I am pumped to see this more access to this sort of information so that I can, you, you know, use that to speak into just like you're saying cryptomancy around like wanting more around what summoners are being run. Like, I, like I said, he told me that Zyvax Vool was the highest win rate, which surprised me. But he also said it only had 60 or 80 battles. And so clearly he has access to what you're just describing or what you're, you're inquiring over. And um, yeah, you might want to go on his website, Summoner Lab, and just, you know, write him a, his Discord is there, the bottom and stuff. Just yeah. write him a comment. There it is. All right. Yeah. We set up the predictions. Nice. Let's see here. I love that when it gets into this like high mana cap, I have a hard time because there's so many good cards. I really would like, I actually do really like the Zyvax Vool in the high mana matches, especially when the archery, well, it doesn't really matter because he has close range, but um, it's always nice when you're, you know, you can, you can look to more of an unusual build when this comes up because it can try, you can try something new. Yeah. Like for instance, Vigilator. You could slip him in the first spot and let him get war that. Chant. What's that? It's the time to put that war chain in front. Oh yeah, Vigilator. And then Chaos Dragon might need to go actually, even though I like him. I like him a lot. <laughs> the Wave Brood's probably a nice little play for the distraction on the, give the Vigilator a little bit more breathing room. Yeah. Well, let's try Let's try See. I don't know if that's the play really. Might even want to go the, that way because if the wave is going to get hit. Yes, let's do that. Then I've got like a, the Cornelius is going to be self healing as it takes some blast damage with the wave brood. The blast too. This is going to be, I'm glad we, Nate? I'm glad we brought taunt. Oh, that's awesome. You're very said Nate. You verse him a lot. Oh, Nate. Uh, yeah, no, I, not a lot. I remember playing him twice before this, and I used to be in a guild with his wife, so she's really nice. Um, what's gonna happen here? So he doesn't. He has a taunt, but that's okay. That's the taunt. His taunt is positioned exactly where I was going to aim, anyways. My taunt is positioned ex in a place that he is not. Like these guys all want to be shooting here. And if they were, I'd be in real trouble. But just that this is going to be in the way for maybe even just one turn. Because look, this is a huge bomb. They're going to hit me hard. And I think they get me. Fire. They get me quick. Yeah. Uh, but. But I think. Uh, I, see, he's got the. It's. I don't have blast, do I? Was that a rule set? Was blast a rule set? No. Oh, sorry. No, see, I think I think we lose because the blast is going to be too much. Like this alone is going to hit for like four damage over here or something. And all of it, everything that's landing here might just kill the Cornelius in addition to killing the brood. But let's find out. Maybe my speed deletes him and that might change something. Yeah. I mean, you do have a lot of damage coming in, so. For sure. But look, at he's already five speed. Now, if I finish him before he hits once, that's a difference. Okay, we are going to get him too. Nice. But wow. still, he's got, a, he's got a 17 meat shield right there, though, still. Yeah, and you just completely obliterated him. See, and then he, but even after... Oof. Yeah, just slap. Oof. Big. Wait, oh, got, you, still got, you still got the shielding? Yeah, You're maybe... Good. Maybe, but no, that's done. That that's that. That's done. Oh, that was big. Yeah, we did the, not. A blast damage. Not. Oh, that hurt me. That hurt me to watch. Boom. Yeah, double stun. Wow. Game over. Oh, I, I really. Oh wow. I don't know. Nate, I'm gonna have to Discord him. That. I'm your biggest fan, Nate. How could you? How could you do me like that? <laughs> Just report him for. For cheating, <laughs> he's he's clearly. How could you possibly have those cards? What is the yeah. URL uh, for Summoner Lab site? So the actual URL that was the you. I was showing you the test site. Um, it's just summonerlab.com, and 
right now the win rates are not actually posted on the public. It's just it's just testing. Um, he's given me access to the test, but uh, it's a great site with a lot of data, and you can do you can see charts for all of them all of the monsters which is interesting you can see historic price data and i'm not logged in right now so i can't i can only see a short window of it but you can actually see up to a year of data if you log in and there's various logins i think there's like a free option but then there's also like a pay option and you'll get even more data and you'll be able to do more charts so if charting is something you're interested in and if you want to even if you're just interested and curious about the historic data around um, Splinterlands monster cards, which I am constantly curious. Like, I want to remember, you know, what did the old Rulia Seas cost? I want to be able to actually go back and not just let my fading memory um, help me get there. I want to be able to see data. So it's a cool site, a really cool site. Created by a good guy. <coughs> um, yeah, let's, let's see. There was more from the... Um, Let's do a couple of these. These are just random one-off comments that, that they tackled. I'm gonna in the uh, town hall, and they aren't. They're gonna feel a little random because they were random when they're presented. But they're, I thought I wrote these ones down in particular because I thought they're important. One of the questions that I thought was really important was when they sell the validators. Is it possible somebody's gonna just show up and get two thousand of them? Like on day one, some super rich person are they gonna just pop in? Now I think that would be. What would that be? A two thousand times two thousand. It's a lot of dough. Yeah. But even yeah. can somebody show up and get ten of them, twenty of them? Is that possible? Um, we're gonna show up and do that. What's that? So we're going to show up and do that. Yeah. Uh, it would be four million bucks to buy all of them, which sounds like a lot of money, but I mean, you know, definitely people. Someone. There are people who could. But the, the 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 takeaway from the town hall was that that won't be possible. Yaba said that they have thought this through and then they have some sort of mechanism in place. He didn't get into details. He didn't want to because probably some people would find ways to gimmick it if he was very descriptive. Um, but he said we had something in place for Waka, and you. He said specifically with Waka, you would not have been able to buy more than three. I don't know how that worked. Maybe the system recognized your account. I don't know what it did. He didn't explain it, but it's good to know that there's something in place where it's kind of like what happened with Waka, which will manage certain accounts buying tons of them and hopefully helping it be more decentralized. Okay, I got 40 seconds. Heavy hitters. Okay, so let's go dragon. And then I got some stunners over here archery because i got some stuns one two three three stuns and then let's get some frontline damage oh, definitely my. definitely want the titan maybe Ooh. oh yeah wait are you able to evade if you're stunned no oh not that one another stunner no you cannot you cannot dodge if you're stunned Cool. Now, I don't know how that works with magic, and there could be some sort of unique stuff happening on magic. But if you are, if your monster is stunned, you will be struck with the following uh, physical attacks. Maybe magic is up; it doesn't work. I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, hang on, hang on. What's gonna happen here? So he's got triage he's got the resurrect he's got the repair he also has scavenge he has life uh, life leech he has another repair he has armor so he's going to be way more resilient than i am because look these guys are all squishy and they have no no armor at all that's a huge problem for me but if we stun if this guy stuns and he doesn't have any he doesn't have any amplified damage, which is really, really important. If he brought an amp damage, I would kill myself hitting him because he has, okay. he has return fire. But if I stun him with those pixies, then the dragon is going to drop a six bomb on him and I have true strike. So we will hit. So I, I might just melt this Alamo Cambio, like just fully delete. And then I like that. I really like that. I brought this opportunity monster because he's not going to be focused firing back here. He's going to, he's going to be shooting at 
this guy, which is nice. One of the repairs, right? I think we lose this one though. I, although I have a ton more stuns and, and knockout is present. So that's, I don't know how to fully think that through. This, this is why I win if I win, but I kind of think I lose because I don't have any armor and he's got, he's got, he's got so much armor and so much, therefore so much more resiliency. And I haven't even said no stun. Oh, he's immune. Oh, that's right. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's nice I got through him, but yeah. And then he's got the stun. Not necessarily over. I'd like to see a stun here. No stun. Come on. No stun there either. So I didn't stun the slug, which I should have. I didn't stun the lone boatman, which I should yeah. I mean, 50, 50 chance I should have, I guess. I didn't stun this guy. At least I got to kill them. Now it's starting to. Yeah, no, that's that. Gee. That's the thing about stun. It's great. I, I had four stunners on my team there. Um, but if they don't land, like if the stun doesn't RNG for you, then, you know, good luck. And uh, the immunity play was smart. I, 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 I fully forgot about immunity. What's going on? Well, I mean, yes, you can phase. So he says, uh, Zwilex, I guess, says you can phase even when it's done. He, he's done it. Victor, I guess not. Yeah, we'll let's queue up another one. We'll do a prediction. Predict Rand for like two minutes, done more. <laughs> nice. I'm begging on the knockout. Ooh, I went again. Betting against 12 is very profitable. <laughs> Ron, go get me my paycheck. <laughs> it's past your bedtime, Ron. Last time, like two weeks ago, Ron said, came on, and he was like, he said it's way past my bedtime, but I if you guys are chat if it if the chat's on Splinterlands, I'm I'm gonna be up to check it out. <laughs>